Hey guys, this is Nick and this is the Stellaris 15 from Tuxedo. Now, you might think that you've already seen this laptop on the channel, in the form of the Slimbook Titan, and you'd be right, it's the same chassis, but the internals are different. I will, in this video, compare the AMD variant that I tried on the Slimbook Titan to the Intel variant on the Tuxedo Stellaris 15, because Tuxedo does something differently. So it's definitely still worth a look. Just like today's sponsor. Okay, so this video is sponsored by Skillshare, and if you've been on YouTube for more than 10 minutes, you probably already know what Skillshare is. They're an online learning community which has courses on virtually every single topic that you might want to learn, whether it's improving something that you already know or learning something entirely new. Now, personally, I've been using Skillshare to improve the video quality of what, what you're watching right now. Basically, check out this before and after. This is one year prior to this, and this is now. I think the results speak for themselves, and I used a course on better film lighting, a course on color correction in DaVinci Resolve, and general camera handling courses. But if you want to learn something else, not camera or video related, there are courses on everything. On Linux, for example, there's plenty of that. Now, creating your account is free, but if you want access to all courses and all chapters, you'll need a Skillshare Premium subscription, or you can also just click the link in the description. If you're one of the 1,000 first person to click it, you'll get a one-month free trial of Skillshare to start learning what's interesting to you. So, the Tuxedo Stellaris 15 is obviously a 15-inch laptop. It weighs 2.2 kilograms, battery included, and is definitely one of the most highest end Tuxedo has to offer in terms of chassis quality, but also in terms of performance. So this laptop can be specced out with the latest Ryzen CPUs or Intel's 11th gen core processors. And since I had already reviewed the Slimbook Titan with the Ryzen 9 5900HX CPU, I opted to use the Intel Core i7 11800H CPU instead to compare how both laptops fare. Please note that Tuxedo also lets you get the Ryzen 9 CPU or the Ryzen 7 5800H. My review unit came with 16GB of RAM, as well as an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070, as well as 256GB of SSD. The display is one of the major focus points of this laptop. It's a 3K panel at 2560 by 1440p, running at 165Hz. It's got amazing viewing angles, really good color accuracy, and seeing as this laptop is definitely made for creatives or gamers, it's a fantastic display. The chassis itself is the same as what the Slimbook Titan uses. It's fully made out of black aluminum, except for the bottom plate, which is removable and lets you access the RAM, the SSD, as well as the battery that you can upgrade and replace. Now, it's a really sturdy device. The chassis is really reinforced, there's not much flex or give even on the keyboard deck, and it still manages to retain kind of a low profile for something that is that powerful. Tuxedo's branding is more subtle than the one on the Slimbook Titan, with a black Tuxedo logo on the back, slightly raised, and that's it. No big logo underneath the screen, which is definitely a good thing, and no stickers on the chassis either. Now I feel like Tuxedo has watched my previous laptop reviews, and they know how to please me. No big branding, no stickers, top notch. Now the bezels are still pretty chunky here though, especially on the bottom. We also find here the excellent Opto mechanical keyboard. It's a mechanical board that uses light instead of switches to actuate the keys. It's got a wonderful tactile feel with great key travel and a satisfying click at the end of each keystroke. The keys bounce back very nicely and the sound is loud but won't make your neighbors want to staple your forehead to your desk. You've got your tux key here as well, and while the key layout is the same than the one I got on the Slipbook Titan, the font used isn't the same, and actually reflects better the primary function of each key, especially on the number row, because on the French layout, this row primarily does accentuated and special characters, and you do numbers when pressing down shift, and that's actually portrayed here on the keys. In short, it's a fantastic keyboard, I loved it on the Slimbook Titan, and I really love it on the Tuxedo just because the print on the keys is just more accurate. The touchpad is really good as well. It's made out of glass, it's super smooth, very reactive, and large enough to be comfortable. It's definitely a good touchpad as far as laptops were installed with Linux go. In terms of I.O., you won't find this laptop wanting. You get a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port, an audio and microphone jack on the left side, 
as well as a full-size SD card reader and two USB 3.1 ports on the right side. On the back, you have a Thunderbolt 4 port, since I went with the Intel option, with video out for up to two 4K displays, an HDMI 2.1 port, a Gigabyte Ethernet jack, and the barrel charger on the back. Now, this barrel charger is a disappointment, as for basically all Linux-based laptops. I wish these manufacturers used USB-C to charge these things. It's 2021. It, it's a lot better. Finally, you get a healthy dose of RGB, because RGB doesn't just make everything look like a toy, it also makes it go faster. Now, as seen on the Slimbook Titan, there is perky RGB lighting, which lets you do crazy patterns, and you also get a light bar at the front of the laptop. Unfortunately, I didn't see any tools that Tuxedo included out of the box to control that RGB, so you basically just get the normal illumination that you get through the function keys, and the light bar just turns on when you open the laptop or when you put it to sleep. You can control it, which is weird, because Slimbook has the utilities to do so. I don't know, maybe it's just not ready on Tuxedo's side yet. Now let's talk about performance. And this is where this laptop really diverges from the Slimbook Titan that I already tried. The Stellaris 15 I got has an Intel Core i7 11800H, which is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU that can go up to 4.6 GHz with a base clock of 2.3. So it's a slightly lower base clock than the Ryzen 9 that I got on the Slimbook Titan, but it's got 24 MB of L3 cache compared to 16 on the Ryzen version. Now both CPUs have the same 45 watt TDP, so let's compare the performance here. So the Core i7 on the Stellaris 15 got a single core score of 1669 and a multi-core score of 8487 when in max performance mode under Geekbench 5. This is surprisingly higher than the scores for the Ryzen 9 I tried on the Slimbook Titan, which got 1511 in single core and 8170 in multi-core. That's about a 10% improvement in single core and 4% in multi-core. Now it's incredible performance for a laptop. It almost matches my Ryzen 7 5800X on the, my desktop and it destroys my 4800H on my laptop. Now it's a very powerful CPU. Intel has nicely caught up and even somewhat surpassed AMD in terms of pure benchmark basic performance. And you also get the benefit of Thunderbolt 4, which is really cool. Now where things get really weird is in gaming benchmarks, because the Stellaris 15 basically wiped the floor with the Slimbook Titan with the same base distro the same version of the NVIDIA drivers, the exact same graphics card, the same amount of RAM, the only difference is the CPU. And the results are just staggering. In Total War Warhammer 2, an old game but very demanding CPU-wise, the Stellaris 15 reached 73.5 FPS on average with everything maxed out. Now the Slimbook Titan with its Ryzen 9 CPU only got around 60 FPS. And Dawn of War 3 again, old game but badly optimized on Linux, the Stellaris reached 91 FPS on average, compared to 60 on the Slimbook Titan. And finally, on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the Stellaris got an average of 84 FPS, while the Titan got 71. So basically, on those three games alone, the Intel 11th Gen CPU gets a 20 to 50% performance advantage over the Ryzen 9 5900HX, which is super surprising to me. The Geekbench scores are really close. And on paper, those CPUs have the exact same number of cores, same base clock, more or less. The Intel only has a little bit more R3 cache, which shouldn't afford for that much performance difference. So I think either when I reviewed the Slimbook Titan, I didn't enable the maximum performance in some case, I don't really know how or why, or it means that the Intel CPU is just miles ahead for these games, which would be very surprising. Unfortunately, I don't really have the Slimbook Titan anymore. I sent it back, it was a review unit, so I can't redo those scores and recompare. But yeah, on paper at least, from what I gathered, the Intel CPU is just much, much better. Now, in terms of battery life, the Slimbook Titan had a teething issue that has been fixed since of not being able to dim the screen brightness when both the AMD graphics and the RTX graphics card were enabled. Now, the Intel device doesn't have that issue, and running it at mid-brightness, 50%, using Wi-Fi and looping YouTube videos, not using the dedicated NVIDIA GPU, I got it to run to about seven, seven and a half hours, which is quite good and about as much as I estimated when I reviewed the Slimbook Titan, even though I couldn't reach those performance metrics because I couldn't 
dim the brightness because it was using both graphics at the same time. Now let's take a look at the software Tuxedo includes. So Tuxedo lets you install multiple distributions, but the default one that they pick is Tuxedo OS. It's based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. It's not a distro that I really took to. It's based on Ubuntu Budgie, it ships too much software for my taste, and I'm not a big fan of the theme or the layout. Still, Tuxedo has its excellent control center that lets you define your own user profiles, tweak them to your liking, and that's something you can install on other distros as well if I understood correctly. I couldn't find any RGB control for the Stellaris 15 as I said before. It doesn't seem to have a pre-installed utility to play with the light bar in front of the laptop or with the keyboard RGB settings. So maybe it's because it's an early model, it maybe has not been developed yet, or maybe Tuxedo just doesn't really want to focus on using that RGB to its max potential. But on the Slimhook Titan you had that, and I felt it was a nice utility for people who want to really do that little color pop on the keyboard or on the front of the device. So, to conclude, in and of itself, the Stellaris 15 is a really fantastic device. It's super solid, great chassis, great looks, Kinda of slim profile, amazing I.O., great touchpad, really perfect keyboard, almost perfect screen. There's not much you can say about it that is negative, honestly. Now, as always, Tuxedo's unboxing experience is also stellar. You get a nice custom box, everything is nicely packaged and protected. You get instruction booklets, the web FAI install key to recover your system, as long as you have an internet connection, and a nice Tux mousepad. It feels premium, and that's an area where other manufacturers could definitely learn a thing or two. Now the only issue here lies in the pricing. The Stellaris 15 I got cost 2179 euros, including our giant 20% value added tax that we got in France. Now the Slimbook Titan that I reviewed previously had the AMD Ryzen 9 CPU, but they also had 250 gigabytes of SSD on top of what the Tuxedo Stellaris 15 that I've got has. And this model cost 2,000 euros, almost a full 200 euros less for 250 gigabytes of SSD more. So if you had to pick between the Slimbook Titan and the Stellaris 15, Tuxedo gives you a better unboxing experience. Better box, more goodies, it's just a nicer experience. You also get more subtle branding and you also get a more legible keyboard in my opinion, where the keys the, the letters printed on the keys reflect more accurately the primary function of those keys. You also get the Tuxedo Control Center, which is a very good utility, which in my opinion looks simpler, looks nicer than what Slimbook provides on their laptops out of the box. But the Slimbook Titan is 200 euros cheaper for the same model. So it all comes down to what value you put in all these little small advantages. It also depends on where you live and where each company ships. In both cases, whether you want to pick the Slimbook Titan or the Stellaris 15, you can go wrong. These are amazing, super premium devices with great hardware. You can install basically any distro you'd want on that and you can still get the utilities and the tools installed on them. So yeah, you can go wrong with any of these. Stellaris 15, good choice. Slimbook Titan, good choice as well. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, this channel is partnered up with Slimbook, which makes the Slimbook Titan I also talked about in this video. They don't affect my judgment, they don't affect my reviews of other products, they don't prevent me from saying what I want about their products or other products. So yeah, I just wanted to leave that out there just in case this might affect how you perceive this video. So thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe. And if you didn't, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you don't like YouTube, you can also watch on Odyssey, all my videos are there. And if you want to help me turn this into a full-time gig, which is going to happen very, very soon, two months now, uh, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and you'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!